Let's make a lead patch using VCV Rack, an open source modular synthesizer. The final sound we're going for sounds like this. But in this part one, we're going to be starting with a simple sound that's controllable via a MIDI device. A main source of sound is a VCO, or voltage controlled oscillator. We're going to be using VCO1, it comes standard with VCV rack. And we want to both see what this looks like and see what it sounds like. So we're generating a sine wave. And to hear what it sounds like, we're not just going to wire it straight to the output because that would be too loud. So we're going to use a mixer. We'll run it into that. And then we should take out the mix. There we go, that is a sine wave. Now that drone is gonna get pretty annoying, so we're gonna add a mute here. And the mute just lets us toggle this sound on and off. To make things a little easier, I'm gonna be using a Malt device, which means I'll be able to move around some of these wires a bit easier, so we go in and then it just replicates that input to multiple outputs. So we want to go one into the scope, one into the mixer, check it's still working, yep. And then we're going to be using an analyzer. This frequency analyzer doesn't come standard, it's part of BOG Audio. You can get that by going to Library, Manage Plugins and add it, it's, it's free. And we'll click it in there and we can see the frequency response and the different harmonics of the sound that we're getting. This VCO can give us a number of different shapes of sound. Right now we're hearing a sine wave, well almost a sine wave. If I flick the digital switch here, this is a pure sine wave, giving us only a single harmonic there. Adding analog adds a couple of extra ones, which adds a bit more interest to the sound. We can also get a triangle wave, a saw wave, a bit buzzier, has a lot going on, and a square wave, which again has a lot going on. The shape of it with this pulse width here. In general, for a lead patch, these extra harmonics are where we can get a lot of interest and gives us a real foundation to play with. The sine wave doesn't really give us much here. In general, for these types of lead patches, you generally start with a triangle, uh, triangle wave, or a saw wave, or a square wave. We're going to be using a saw wave, but for now, I'm actually just going to leave it on sine because it's a little less aggressive on the ears while we're initially working on it. We can change the frequency or pitch of our VCO using this knob here, or this knob for smaller changes. But that in of itself isn't that useful to us because we really want to control this with a MIDI device. So that's what we're going to do now. We take the Voct output from our MIDI controller and add it to the VCO. And now if I play notes on the keyboard, you can see it changes the pitch. So that's quite nice. A handy thing to do with these MIDI controllers though is to add in an octave module. This allows us to easily change the octave of the note. So we can go up two octaves, which means makes it a little easy for me to play in the lower register and get higher pitches. It means you can do a lot more with a smaller keyboard. So we have a basic tone that we can control the pitch of using our keyboard. But we can't be very expressive. This isn't really yet an instrument that we'd want to play. The tone keeps going after we release the key. And in general, we can't use any of the knobs on our keyboard to control it. It's not really a performance instrument yet. That's what we're going to be tackling in part two.